I'm constantly thinking about not just what does it mean to decarbonize, but what does it mean to make sure people that are most vulnerable can adapt to this new climate that we've already created. I remember when I first immigrated to Vancouver, we didn't really have these drastic forest fires um, or anything like that. It's now a norm to buy these masks. This is not a problem of the future generation. It's actually here and now, and it's for my generation. The Middle East in particular has to play a pivotal role in the climate transition. I want my country to be part of that. I want to be able to help them get there. It's ultimately a global problem with massive inertia that's a collective action problem. Every single time I go to Nigeria, which is like once or twice a year, multiple blackouts a day was a very constant thing. How do you run a factory on that? A hospital? Or any business, really? Earthbond takes When I originally set out um, towards this in entrepreneurship path, I wasn't focused specifically on energy. A lot of the work I've done about how do you empower and how do you uh, support small business owners ties into this need of now they're facing these climate risks. And I started really delving deep and researching uh, renewables and understanding how you can build out like an easier way for small, medium businesses to access financing for solar. There's just simply not enough people to actually help with the decarbonization. The electricians, the HVAC. My intention is to help address that labor shortage. We need to make sure whatever jobs they get in climate are actually good jobs. I want to launch a venture, hopefully this year, that helps to start to address some of those issues at the intersection of workforce development and climate. As an engineer and a structural engineer and an architect, and having grown up in New York City, the scope of the climate problem and its prevalence within the urban environment was something that I wasn't really attuned to until I became a real estate developer. You know, cities are responsible for three quarters of material consumption, of energy use, of greenhouse gas emissions, 40% allocated just to buildings alone. And the way that you can decarbonize is by doing it at scale and thinking about the future implications that a solution like green cement would have. Oman as a country is extremely beautiful. Mountain ranges, a huge coastline, untouched beaches, incredible marine life. Slowly over time, I started to see the impacts of climate change, coral bleaching, oil spills, tropical cyclones that we didn't tend to get. I created with a co-founder a company called 4401 before I came to HBS. 4401 is the molecular mass of carbon dioxide. It literally means CO2. We take CO2 that's been captured by our partner and inject it into these really special rocks that we find in certain parts of the world. And then we react that CO2 with this host rock to convert it into another rock, calcium carbonate. It's effectively an inert mineral. So with that process, we can take CO2 and eliminate it from existence. As a construction engineer my first two years out of college, I had no idea that concrete was the second most used material after water, or that uh, cement alone was responsible for 7.5% of carbon emissions, the holy grail of a carbon solution. As I've spent my two years at Harvard Business School digging into the climate world, both in the industries and in real estate construction in the built environment, and in energy and agriculture, started to understand the complexity and the scope of the problem. Um, I had the opportunity to work with a startup based out of MIT and an amazing team who's working to fundamentally change the chemistry of cement in a way that is economically sustainable. My company is geology first, it's scientific first. I am not a scientist or even an engineer by training. Um, I'm a finance guy, I came from the consulting world. So when I came to HBS, I think that's one thing I learned is how to lead an organization, lead a team, you know, build organizational structure, understand um, organizational culture, and how all those intangible elements of a functioning company actually feed into not just building it from the start, but into implementing a longer term vision. The 30 or so years that happen to align with my career as I leave HBS, is the clock that we have as society to put a dent in our emissions and transform our energy systems, our industrial systems, our food use systems to a post-carbon future. For me, it's about trying to continue to build up this theory that if you can support entrepreneurship, if you can support small business owners and their own self-sufficiency, you can promote economic development. 
What do we owe? And how do we think about climate justice? I am expecting my first child. And I realize that actually my main motivator is to do this for the next generation. In the end, every company is going to become a climate company.